to live. And we're going to look at one scripture in this section uh, that we've been teaching on, and it's verse 13. So let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13. And it says this, What you heard from me keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Everybody say, in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're going to end with that today, in Christ Jesus. But here's a, uh, uh, Paul, again, writing to Timothy, uh, this portion of Scripture, to help Timothy to strengthen his faith, to remind Timothy of uh, whom he believes in. If you read the verse right before that, he wanted to... Uh, Ensure to Timothy that this might be a hard journey, but don't neglect the fact that you're young. Remember in 1 Timothy, it says don't uh, let people make fun of you because you're young, but uh, serve the Lord with faith and believing. And so we're going to talk about how to learn to live today. And we're looking at something different. We're going to look at the heart of the people that Paul was talking about and how he encouraged Timothy, because if you remember, all the religious people at this time had this very head knowledge of things of God, but they didn't have it from the heart. So what, the way we're going to learn to live today is take what we know in our head about God and move it to our heart. Amen? And it's going to be three tests we're going to talk about in a little bit. How many ever taken a test in your life? Right? You went to school, you took a test, you took an exam, right? And uh, how many loved when they had, the teachers said, after you studied for a week, your test was coming, and the day before the test, the teacher would say, you're going to have an open book test. You ever have a teacher do that to you? I had a history teacher that, you know, I had, I was not, I'm, I'm not a very good at memorizing. It's the brain that God gave me. I'm satisfied with that. But, you know, sometimes you get these, uh, these you study, for exam. I have to study a lot. And I would study diligently to uh, make sure I would pass a certain test. And then uh, I would get that grade uh, as the teacher would pass them out, uh, you know, with the big letters on the top. It would A or a B or a C. And I don't care if I studied for a week or a month, my grade always was like a C. How many like that? You know what I'm saying? You can do it. I know some of you brain people are like, you know, you get A's and if you've got a, ever got a C on a test, you'd probably kill yourself. But, you know, it's not, some of us just have to study extra harder. But I remember our history teacher, after studying and studying and studying diligently uh, and memorizing everything they had to memorize, all of a sudden, the day before the test, the teacher said to me, or said to all of us, Your, tomorrow's test is an open book test. <sighs> oh, my goodness. That was like relief. No pressure. All right, I got this. And, of course, I got better than the C on that grade when we had the test. But that's a great feeling, isn't it, to know that we have an open book test. Turn to your partner, turn to your neighbor, and say we're having an open book test today. God is going to give us some tests, and we're going to see in our, in our, the test that he gives us. How many know that God tests you? He tests our faith to see that we were going to do what he's told us to do. And sometimes we default to what's natural for us and we fail the test. How many ever failed the test with God given to you? Amen? Say yes. Yeah. I know we all have. But he's always given us a way out through Jesus Christ to make the right decision in those tasks. And we want to, today we're going to examine that and hopefully that we'll make the right decisions as God, with his love and compassion, challenges us to go deeper and deeper with him and take things out of our head. I mean, you know, some, there's some people that just study and they have all this head knowledge about the Word of God. I met those, those ministers and scholars that, man, they can tell you about the, the year that the children of Israel went into the desert. They can tell you when Moses was at Mount Sinai and what happened there and all the details. And I'm like, that's really great. And Elijah and all those things that happened in the Old Testament. They can tell you every story and every fact. And they can go back. And, and I'm like, that's really great, but that's not me. Amen. I just like, okay, that's cool. That's really good. That's a lot. But what... To have all the book knowledge and not have it in your heart really doesn't do anything for your relationship with the kingdom of God. It's good to know these facts, but then how do you put them into practice? How do we do, like I prayed earlier today, and be compassionate and uh, about those around us that are not or don't, don't have that relationship with God? How do we, how do we get past that task? And we're going to talk about that today. 
It's not about what we have in our heads, but what we do. Amen. Now think about this. It's when we study, when we have bitterness in our heart and we have unforgiveness in us, how do you overcome that besides going and asking somebody to forgive you? You have to actually do it, right? I have all the knowledge in the Word of God that tells me that I'm supposed to forgive people. And I read in the Lord's Prayer that if I don't forgive somebody, then the Lord, the Father of God will not forgive me. But, you know, you have to actually do it, right? How about personal finances, right? I mean, how many have a budget, right? It's not until you actually create a budget, live by a budget, you know that a budget actually works, right? You have to actually do it. You can study how to do a budget. You can lay out a budget. But until you live by a budget, it's, you know, it's one of those things that uh, is beneficial to you. But until you actually do it, it's hard. It, 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 you don't know what it really is. And so that's what's, those are, we're going to talk about some of those tests today. So the message today is to learn to live. Second Timothy again says this. What you have heard from me keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Paul is introducing to Timothy three simple tests that Timothy is going to face. Paul gives Timothy those answers. We are going to get to the answers for the tests that we are about to face in our life. Nothing to fear because these tests, again, are open book. You don't have to fear the tests that God's going to give you. Amen? Because they're going to be open book tests. The first test is this. Who are you listening to? Let me read again. Paul said this to Timothy. What you hear from me, keep us a pattern of sound teaching. So what voice are you hearing? Who are you listening to? What did Timothy hear Paul say? Now think about this. Tim, in Paul's ministry, Paul was beaten. He was stoned. Timothy was there when Paul started the church in Ephesus and went through all that building of that church and all the trials that went on there. I believe Timothy was there when Paul was beat. Remember last time we talked about the suffering that he went through? He was, he was whipped just like Jesus was three different times. I believe Timothy, Timothy saw a lot of things and examples of Paul that Paul never wavered in his faith. Even though he went through the shipwreck and was left out in the sea for a day and a night, he was still, had his faith was in Christ Jesus. And Timothy, and Timothy seen that. And he said, follow me. Do what I do. Never wavering in what Jesus did and the gospel and, and the message that was supposed to be told. Who voice are you listening to? Now think about this for a second. A lot of us have voices every day, don't we? Some of us come from families that weren't very nice. Maybe abusive situations. Your father or mother or your uncles told you we're no good. Are you going to believe those messages or those things about you? Or are you going to believe what Jesus said about you? That you're a child of God. That you're a prince or prince, princesses of Jesus. That you have authority here on earth. That you're somebody and God loves you. And he loved you so much that he would die for you. Whose voice are you listen to? The voice of the world and telling you you're no good? You don't measure up? There's something wrong with you? Look at your life. How can you mount anything? Have you ever heard that story before? A lot of us heard different things. But we can listen to a lot of different voices. And those voices are not good. Or voices that would want to uh, cause you to be deceived. Or how about the voice that says, go ahead, you can do that. It's okay. Nobody's going to know about that. You ever hear that voice? And you know it's the wrong voice? We need to listen to the voice of Jesus. Listen to his voice. Listen to what he's saying. Listen to his spirit because he said this, I'm going to send to you a spirit, a Holy Spirit, that's going to lead you to all truth. I'm going to send you a comforter that's going to help you when you're coming, you're through trials and tribulations. But I think one of the neat things about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit will always lead you and I to what truth is. What should I do in this situation? Or what should I do in that situation? You know, I was, uh, I was kind of a rebellious kid when I was growing up. How many, I got one, two, three teenagers here. You know what rebellion is. I'm going to do what I want to do. Remember I talked about that last week? I want to do it my way. 
I know my mom and dad love me, but hey, I'm doing my own thing. And that rebellion is really not rebellion at all. Really what that rebellion is, just like the rest of the world. Everybody kind of does that. We all grow up with that nature in us that we always want to do our own thing. It's not rebellion. You know what rebellion is? Rebellion is to be a Christian and walk away from the things of the world and say, hey, I'm going to be something different. Rebellion is saying, I'm going to not be like the world. I'm going to be like God. And I'm going to stand up for something different and truth and righteousness and holiness. That's rebellion. Can you say amen? Come on. You know what I'm saying? And when I became a Christian, I walked away from all my old friends. I had a lot of friends before I became a believer. We smoked pot. We drank beer. We did a lot of stuff we weren't supposed to do in our life. But we did it. It was just going with the flow. The voice of the world was pulling me away. I just wanted to have friends and do my own thing. Amen? And then all of a sudden, somebody told me about this Jesus who loved me and cared about me and it changed my life. And I said no to that. And then when I told my friends, I'm a Christian now and I can't do those things, what's wrong with you? You're crazy. You're nuts. I said, I'm doing it anyway because I know it's right. Amen. Amen. Because something happened inside me and it changed my life. That's what rebellion is. Listen to the voice. What voice are we listening to? Listen to the voice. Of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now, if you've been with Christ for a long time, you still need to listen to the voice. Amen? When the Holy Spirit says, leads you to, to reading the Word of God or sharing your faith, listen, it's hard to do that. It's not natural. Come on, folks. It's not natural to stand up in a group of people and say, hey, I'm a believer. In this country, you won't get killed for it. Maybe in another country, you would. Be rebellious. Stand up for Jesus. You never think you'd hear a pastor say to be rebellious, right? Because to go with the flow. You know, when I was a new believer, this is what, how Christianity was described to me. You ever probably heard this? It's like being in a boat or a canoe. Anybody ever been in a canoe before? Uh, it's kind of unstable a little bit, but it's, you know, you can, you can paddle. <laughs> you can paddle your canoe and go down it. Go down the river, right? So if you're going down a river in your canoe and you're going with the flow of the river, it's pretty easy, right? You just have to steer it, go with the flow, do what everybody else is doing, do the stuff they're doing, everything's happy. But when you become a Christian, when you become a believer, just what they told me, is that it's like taking that canoe in that river, flowing downstream, and turning it around. And you go in the opposite direction. And let me tell you, when you make that, when you first become a believer in Jesus, you take that turn, it's very difficult. Now, if you've ever been in a canoe, it's kind of a little unstable, so if you make that turn in a river, you're gonna, it's gonna be, the river's gonna push you, your canoe's gonna be sideways in that river, you gotta paddle really, really hard, and then finally you get to the front of the, the canoe heading upstream, and you gotta really, really, I mean, paddle with all your might to make that change in life, because now you're listening to a different voice. You're not listen, listening to the voice of the world. And as you start to paddle and you're going, it's still kind of hard. And all of a sudden you get pulled back a little bit. And you're going and going. You know what I'm talking about? But then all of a sudden when you begin to continue to believe in Jesus, that he loves you and cares for you, then you have this wind of the Holy Spirit that comes and kind of pushes you. And all of a sudden it gets a little easier. You start to trust in the Lord a little bit more. And you know that Jesus Christ is there with you in every step that you go with. And he's in that boat with you. And you continue to move. And all of a sudden it gets a little easier. And the Spirit of God begins to blow and begins to push upstream the way He's supposed to go. Be rebellious. Go upstream. It's the right way to go. Amen? Upstream or downstream? Which would you prefer? It's your choice. You can pass the test. Listen to the right voice. Amen? The second test is this. What pattern? Look at what He says in verse uh, 13 again. He says, What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching. So what pattern? Now I looked up the word pattern in, in the dictionary. So what does pattern mean? It means, uh, uh, make, it's like uh, an example or a model, a pattern. So I'm thinking like pattern, like uh, I remember when, when Tina made dresses for the girls. She went to the store, got a pattern, and she laid it out on the, on the cloth. She cut it out, she sewed it all together. Voila, there's a dress. Pretty cool. Uh, what pattern? What are you going to model yourself after? What did Paul do? Paul served the Lord. Now listen to this. The 
pattern that Paul gave to us, or the example he gave, was the same example of Christ. Christ didn't come into the world and say, look, I'm king of kings and lord of lords. You will listen to me and obey me, right? He didn't do that. Jesus came in humility. Now, how humble can you come to the earth? Think about this. God, Jesus, if you read in John 1, was in the beginning and the formation of the world. He was there when God spoke in the light and the earth was formed. Jesus was there, and he came to this earth in a, as a baby. As a helpless, I mean, think about it. You see, any animal, puppies, kittens, whatever, any animals, within minutes, they're, they're, they're nursing, they're taking care, right? They're walking, some animals are walking. You got a human baby? They're like the most helpless thing in the whole world. Think about that. You gotta nurse them, you gotta cuddle them, you gotta keep them warm, you gotta everything. And this is what Jesus came. And then he came, we say, we see that he came uh, as a manger when Mary and Joseph had to go and, and to Bethlehem for the census. If you read Luke chapter 2, you read all about the story when Jesus came. And Paul says to us that we be an example like me. Paul came be humble. I mean, think about Paul could have said, I'm the apostle of all apostles. I'm the best there is. I'm telling you the truth. <clears throat> Look at the miracles that he did. I mean, just the very fact that the hankies that he had and he gave the people, healed people. He could have been so bold. Look, I got a healing ministry. He could have been on TV. But he did. He didn't come that way. He came humble. He came as a servant. He told Timothy, follow this path. Don't exalt yourself, but just come humbly and serve people and love them. Because what is the greatest commandment? Think about that. What is the greatest commandment? Jesus, the, the, the religious sect tried to, to trick Jesus. And Jesus gave them the law. Jesus gave many examples. But he said, do these two things. He said, if you would love God, if you would love God with everything within you, with passion, love Him, get to know Him, understand Him, and love other people like you love yourself, you, you got everything covered. You don't have to worry about religious activities. You don't have to worry about ceremonies. You don't have to worry about anything. But love God. And when you love God, listen, I, I have trouble loving people sometimes. Come on, raise your hands, yes. Uh, people offend you, people make fun of you, people laugh at you, right? So sometimes I have trouble with that. But I've learned in my relationship with God, when I get closer to Him, when I love Him, not with my head, but I get it in my heart, that I can love people. It's just natural. I, I have to. Because the love of the Father flows in me, then it has to flow out of us. Right? doesn't matter what somebody does, or how they act, or who, where they're from, or what they say, I can love them like that. But I can't do that on my own. I have trouble sometimes. Come on. I judge sometimes. I'm, uh, I can say the word in church. Can I say this word? Uh, I'm prejudiced sometimes. Is that okay? How many of you, don't raise your hands. But you know, we deal with that. But as true believers in Jesus Christ, we have to overcome that. We only can overcome that by having a love for the Father. And the Father that loves the whole world, that gave His Son, Jesus, for each one of us, that love begins to come inside of us. And when, it's, when it gets full, when we're full of that Father's love, it begins to pour out of us. And then when we see somebody walking on the side of the road in 20 degree below zero weather, We'll stop and say, let me, can I help? You need some help. Otherwise, we're just selfish. We don't, we don't do stuff like that. Or we see somebody in need, and we want to just, with compassion, help them. So what pattern are we following? Are we following after Jesus' pattern of loving the world? Look at the compassion Jesus had. Look at the love he had. He was at the well. And we know the story about the woman at the well, where she had many husbands, and, and God cried.
Christ could have judged her right there. You're bad. You're no good. You're evil. You look at all the bad stuff you did. But no. He says, what you're seeking is a water that you can drink that you'll never thirst again. And with compassion, this woman realized that something happened inside her. Something changed in her. That this man that should have judged her because he was Jewish and she was a Samaritan. And in that culture, she was less than a human being. That's why she was at the well in the afternoon. Read the story. Look a little history about that. But God loved her. And with compassion, Paul is saying, follow this pattern. Make yourself vulnerable to the world so my love can be shown to them. It's a hard thing to do. Because we're so selfish, are we not? The pattern that Paul left for Timothy, let's look at um, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. He had an enduring love. He had a faithful love. He, had a, he wanted to glorify Jesus. 2 Timothy verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 6 through 8. It says, For I have already been poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only me, but also to all those who have longed, longed for this appearing, for his appearing. So not only for Paul, but he longed for the appearing of Jesus. He endured to the end. He endured to the fact, as a matter of fact, he did not compromise what he believed in Jesus all in that prison cell. Now think about it. He was in prison, probably chained to a couple guards, you know, not taken care of very nicely. I mean, prisons aren't like prisons today. And he says, I'm not going to denounce Jesus. I'm not going to announce that I love and serve the God. Endure. Some of us are a little older. Endure. Keep the faith. Live a pattern for us that are younger. As Paul encouraged me, he lived a pattern of humility, faithfulness, enduring, love, and compassion. We have to choose this pattern, as we told Timothy. We've got to choose this pattern to follow, not after the world, but follow after Christ. Jesus tells us to be generous. And the world says, keep everything you have for yourself. Jesus tells us to live unconditionally. And the world tells us, well, if they offended you, no. Don't, don't even associate with them. Don't forgive them, the world says. And Jesus says, forgive them. Jesus tells us to forgive somebody, not just one time, but 70 times, seven times. I mean, remember hearing that? Somebody wronged you? Somebody abused you? Forgive them, because in that forgiveness, you show the very love of Christ. Have you ever forgiven somebody that really wronged you? Don't raise your hand. That you really were hurt by, that really hurt you deep inside, and you said to say, you know, I know I'm supposed to forgive that person. And we want to church service after service. I hear the message about forgiveness. And I read that if I don't forgive that person, that God Himself cannot forgive me. And I, I hurt inside because I know it's true. I need to forgive, but oh, it was so deep of a wound that's inside me. I, I just can't bring myself to forgive that person. You ever been there? And then you read the scripture again, it says, oh, I have to forgive not only once, but 70 times 7, which kind of just means you have to always forgive, is what it boils down to. And I know that because I studied the word, I know I have to forgive, but it just is almost impossible until one moment the Holy Spirit reminds you how much God loves you and how much he forgave you and said yes. And he brings healing to that broken heart in the moment that you say, yes, Lord, I forgive them. Be that example. Be that way to the world around you. Because then they'll come and have the freedom and the love that Christ gave you and me. The third test. The 
what passion we live for. Now let's go back to 2 Timothy 1. This is the passion that kept Paul going. He says before, he says, I know whom I believe. So no matter what happens to me, I believe that. Verse 13 says, what you have heard from me keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. I can't do this without faith and love in Christ Jesus. We have to do this in Christ Jesus. In my own ability, I cannot accomplish anything but only in Christ Jesus. Amen? What test, what a test, what passion are you dri drives you? What, I, I was praying, maybe today, maybe the church, maybe the American church has lost its passion of faith and love. Maybe we struggle because we don't, we're not passionate about being in Christ. Maybe we're not passionate about who God is and how much He loves us and how much He cares for us. I want to move away from the, the religion, the, the Christianity that says, I have all this knowledge about God, but I have to have it right here. I have to have passion. I have passion in my head. Do I believe what God said is true? Yes, but do I, am I passionate about it? Am I pursuing God? Am I, do I want Him to see Him glorified in the earth today? Or am I just doing this for my own good? Look at Paul as a pattern. He did it humbly. But he did it all the time. Everywhere he went, every city, Every place he went, he was sharing the true message of hope for the world. He was passionate. I pray for you and me today that we restore not only that understanding of who Jesus is, but the passion to share his message to the world around us. Amen. We have to look at the big picture. Think about Jesus, um, and God, God the Father, and all his wisdom. He, first of all, he sent the law. Through Moses. I mean, here, follow these Ten Commandments. Just do these things and love me, and you're going to be good. And what happened? We failed. We failed that test. And then he sends Elijah up on Mount Carmel. You remember the story? The, the priests were, had their sacrifices on one side, and he had his sacrifice, and they yelled and screamed and cut themselves all night long, and nothing happened. And then they even told, and, and uh, in the middle of a drought, Elijah says, Here, get some water, pour it over the sacrifice. I'm going to call on the God of all gods, and he's going to consume all this. And what happened? God proved himself and consumed all of the, his sacrifice and their sacrifice. And still, we didn't believe, we failed. That test. See the power of God? The power of God was demonstrated through Elijah, and we still fail that test. And then think about King David being on the throne. Why was King David put on the throne? To show the very love of God to the world. A righteous, holy king, a compassionate king. Everybody loved him. And still we rejected that. And then God, one more time, in all his wisdom. Put all that together, all the religion, all the activities of the world, and John 1, he said this, I'm going to send my son, the word of God, the knowledge of God, the word of God, I'm going to send him to the world to become flesh. And people would believe in him, because we don't have to believe in a system, we don't have to believe in an activity, a religious activity, we just need to believe in Jesus. Amen. Believe in Him. Forget about all the law. Forget about all the righteous things that we're supposed to be or do. We just have to believe in the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. If we believe in that, then we have righteousness and holiness that only comes from Jesus. 
It's not anything that we can earn or do. That's what's so beautiful about the Word of God. He showed Moses the law. He showed Elijah the power of God, the love of God through David. And then we have the Word of God through Jesus. If we just believe in Him. And what He did for us, then we'll be righteous and holy because of Him, not because of anything we do. My heart is that we become passionate about the message. You can tell people, like I told that young lady at the doctor's office, you don't have you don't, you don't have to associate with a religion. Just know Jesus. Just know Him. I mean, she was all ready to apologize. Well, I don't really go to church enough. I mean, no, I said stop, I stopped her. I said, I don't want you to feel it's not about guilt. Jesus doesn't want you to feel guilty. He wants you to feel holy and righteous because of what he did for you. Amen? Feel passion and pass the test that God has for us. Amen? Uh, anybody get anything out of this today? Let's read that verse one more time. Maybe by the end of this, the day you have it memorized, right? What you heard from me, keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. What voice are you listening to? Who are you following? Amen. And are you seeking him with passion? But all my heart, think about that, like this commandment that Jesus said. He didn't say follow the law. He didn't say follow all these things. Don't do this religion. And he's talking to Jewish people. They had the whole garb. They had all the stuff they had to do. They had the prayer cloth. They had the temple. They had all the sacrifices. They had all these things. But Jesus said do this. Would you just do this one thing? Do these two things, I'm sorry. Would you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength? I mean, come on. If we, if we just take a survey, if everybody's in this room today, do we love God? How many, how many say, I, my favorite saying is, I'm working on it, right? I'm really working on it. I want to I wanna love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and body, strength because and so I can love people like Jesus loves people, that I would be willing to sacrifice my life for them or my provisions for them or whatever I have that they may know Christ. Maybe this Christmas season, I know it's going to be over in a couple weeks. We're going to have Christmas Day, the 25th, and the 26th, and we're taking down the Christmas trees, we're putting everything away, we're boxing everything up. But I want to pray that the passion that you can get from today's message, the passion that you would receive from Him, so you can change that, so this will go on for the whole next year, that you would love God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength, and then love whoever God puts in your pathway. Whoever that may be, new students, maybe somebody new in Madison, the internationals, amen? Maybe your neighbor that you lived next to for the last couple years, they don't even know you're a Christian because you never said anything to them? Hello? Or the person across the street that, don't, don't, that you never met? Maybe the reason we're where we're at in our life is because God places us there so we can be a witness to Him, to our loved ones, and to people around us. Maybe the light that we have in us will draw the unbeliever to Christ and they'll see our love for them and also say, why are you so nice? Why did you bake that cake or cookies and give it to me? Oh, it's, it's Christmas. Okay, you're just being nice because it's Christmas. But what if they find out that's a genuine love that you care for them? Or maybe you can't even go there yet. You can't even have a genuine love for them because you don't have that passionate love for the Father. I'm going to tell you today, Father God is passionate about you. He cares about you. He loves you. That's why he sent Jesus to take care of your sins and your guilt and your disappointments and your hurts, your healing. And our mission, if you are willing to accept it, is to share that love with somebody else. Amen? So I'm asking you this week, I'm going to challenge you. First of all, I'm going to pray for you, and then I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to pray for you. So this week, we have those little flyers. Would everybody just take one and invite somebody to come to service next week? Amen? Just take one. I'm not asking you to take 20, 30, or 40. Just take one. Somebody that, that the Holy Spirit leads you to, I'll give that to them and invite them to come to our service and tell them about the dinner afterwards. And anyway, just... Just do that and listen to the Holy Spirit. But I want to pray for you to have a passion. I pray for myself to have a passion to listen and do and be obedient 
And be like Paul. All through all the trials and tribulations, and through all the hurts and, and all the beatings and all the stonings and all the stuff that he went through, he still was a light to Timothy and to the rest of the world at the time. So let's pray. Father, you see everyone that's in this room. And Father, I know we all struggle with, with doing the right thing. And so, Father, today I pray that you give us not only obedience to your word, but that it won't just be head knowledge, that it be in our hearts. And that the love that we have for you would go out from us to the world around us. Bring into our pathway this week, God, somebody that you want us to share your love with. And Father, bring back or restore to us our passion to make your message known to the world around us. And Father, I thank you for that. I pray your blessings on each person. Father, in the name of Jesus, and no matter what we're struggling with today, God, Hallelujah. Come on, folks. Whatever we're struggling with today, Father, we just give it over to you because we know you love us and care for us. And I thank you for that, Father God. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Lord. Love you guys. Come on, give each other a hug. Tell them, we're gonna, tell them the person next to you you're going to pass the test. Amen.